Hello, you coffee painters. Um, today, what I'm gonna do is this. We're gonna be doing a little kind of practice, um, kind of get to know the coffee. Um, I like to do a little value scale, just to kind of get used to what's going on. Um, so the materials we have right now are this. I got a piece of uh, Crescent board. Works pretty good, takes the coffee really well. You want some water on hand. Um, I got a little palette here too. You can use whatever. A little dish is fine, a little, uh, uh, maybe a lid to a container. You got a plastic container. Perfectly fine for that. Um, just whatever you can find around. Um, got a watercolor brush here as well, a little bit bigger one that's fine. I always use paper towel. Anytime you do any sort of painting, always have paper towel on hand. So, first thing is this what I want you to do is this I want you to go ahead and make four different values. If you want to do five, that's great, um, but four different values with the coffee, and it's a little bit hard to control. So mixing this stuff up, it, it's, it's kind of interesting. You can see that I've been using this palette right now. I've got some of my coffee here. It's all dried up, though. You can always add water to it and bring it back to life. It's perfectly fine. It works really well. So I like to use some of the freeze-dried coffee. I got a little Folgers pack right here. It works pretty good. I can kind of control a little bit of it coming out, and I'm just going to go ahead and put a ooh, little bit into my little cubby here. Okay, we're just going to go ahead and kind of do that. And you want to start out with just a little bit to begin with. Always use just a little bit of water, okay? Because if you put too much water and you dilute this, it's really, really hard to go back and keep adding more coffee to kind of control that darkness, okay? So right now, you know, actually it doesn't look like a lot of water, but this is pretty good. So you want to go ahead and stir it up a little bit. Well, remember, these are freeze-dried crystals, so it takes a little bit, but while, a little bit for them to kind of dissolve. All right, ooh, and I can already smell that sweet, sweet coffee Folgers taste. All right, so we've got this. Now, if you wanted to go really dark, I'm gonna try this other section that I have back here. Sometimes I add just a little bit of water and I use kind of the, the older stuff that I have and just kind of twist my twist my brush a little bit and kind of control this. Now, if I go really dark, I go ahead and kind of add a little bit of a coat on here. Now, this isn't terribly dark, but what I found out too is this. When you put this on, you kind of dab it on and let it dry. It really kind of holds on to that whole dark value, okay? Um, and I would even say, too, I could go a little bit darker, but I'm not going. I think I'm going to go ahead and kind of just forego that. So the next thing I want to do is this. I'm going to go ahead and take a little bit more water. Once I'm taking this, very carefully kind of put in the water and then a little kind of cubby next to here. Maybe take a little bit more of this coffee. I want to go a little bit darker here yet. All right, just kind of add another little line here. Ooh, some of that crystal didn't dissolve there. All right, add a little bit more here. I'm going to add a little bit more. That, there we go. All right, and there you go. That's a nice little subtle change. And you are, you want to leave it so that it does look very kind of very wet. I mean, that's basically what's going to happen. All right, next one over. You know, an interesting observation. The color that I have from the Folgers is a little bit different than the color I had from the other paint I used yesterday, which is a different type of coffee. Ooh, different coffees giving different colors that is crazy look at that this one's a lot more warmer looking all right so there you go I got a nice little subtle change now if you get too much what look at this if you get too much water in here it looks too dark get your brush dried off just run over the top look at it look at how it just kind of absorbs that very nice so you can really kind of control a lot of the coffee too very easily that way as well all right a little bit more on the brush with the water gonna really make this one light okay there you go look at that I mean it's very subtle what's interesting to I notice about coffee is this. This last one that I did, you can barely see it, but when it dries, it does get darker. So that's kind of something to think about too, guys, is that they will kind of change. And one thing that's kind of fun about coffee is sometimes you get a little bit of a ridge around areas where they dry as well. Now, the next thing I want you to do is this. This is a shape, this is an object of your choice. If you wanted to keep it simple and just kind of do a circle, you could do that. Um, you want to sketch it out with pencil first. Always sketch out things lightly though because um, coffee is very trans translucent or transparent. It's less like watercolor, so you're going to see it through. Um, I just did a flower. I thought that turned out pretty good. Um, you know, like I said, it's entirely up to you as kind of far as what you want to do. You know, if I wanted to go in here and say, well, what if I kind of create just a little bit of a tree here. I'm getting kind of a bit ambitious here. Like I said, if you want to kind of do a circle, but I want to make sure that you kind of show a little bit more of the three-dimensional qualities. Think of it this way. You want to build up some layers where you got you have some some highlights and you have some shadows. So on the top here of the tree, it'll probably be a little bit lighter. Down below, it'll be a little bit darker. So I'm going to go in here, you guys, and I'll think about that. I'm going to go ahead and kind of add a little bit of my darker areas down here. Now, a couple things you can do. You can go ahead and you can put it on dry paper like this. I'm going to move this too so I don't get any water on that. And, or you could go ahead and add a little bit of water in through here. Now, look at this. Look at how I put a little bit of water here, how it takes that coffee and kind of drags it up. Okay? And if you get too much in here, you can go ahead and kind of add a little bit on through there like that. Okay? All right? Same thing with my trunk. Okay? Actually, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to add a little more coffee here. 
too. I want to kind of darken this up just a little bit. Oop, got to remember what end you got coming out of. Okay, all right, there you go. Go do that. It looks pretty good. Stir it around a little bit. Now, one thing that's kind of fun too is that the with the crescent board especially, the water dries pretty quick. So you can kind of work, but you have to have a little patience. I know with regular watercolor, you really have to have patience. But um, one thing, though, when you start kind of having these um, areas kind of, when they're wet, kind of touch each other, it's really kind of tricky to kind of have that control because they're just going to bleed. One thing that's kind of nice, too, and I, I forgot to mention this, with these watercolor brushes, if you twist them, you can get a beautiful point. I mean, you really can. Look at that. Look at how I'm able to kind of create this and create these nice little kind of lines in through there. Okay? That's pretty awesome. And, you know, the other thing, too, is this. I could always drop in a little bit more coffee in through here. Look at how it darkens that up. Drop a little more coffee here. And whatever I wanted left white, I'm just going to leave white. Okay? I'm going to go ahead and do this now. I'm going to go ahead and take a Remember this a little bit of that darker stuff here? I'm going to grab some of these here, too. We're really going to darken this up. Don't be afraid to have this really, really kind of have a, almost like a muddy type coffee. And the other thing, too, is this. Don't dump this out there. Clean this off. You want to save this from day to day. All right? Um, and you can easily do that. It'll dry out, but you just keep adding more water to it. Okay? And it works pretty good. Okay? Now, what I want to do is this. I kind of like that so far because putting, putting that wet on wet, it kind of makes it kind of mushroom out a little bit. Um, but what I do is this. I'm going to go ahead. I'll let this dry. And when you let it dry, then I can go back and I can go ahead and add some of the details. What I'm going to do is I'm just going to pause this real quick and show what I mean. All right, kind of let it dry out a little bit. Um, I'm going to see if I can add some detail now with some of my darker coffee paint here. Um, just by taking some of this, I'm going to try a little bit more of these here. There we go. I'm going to scoop up a little bit more here. All right, we're just going to go ahead and kind of see this. Now, hopefully it doesn't get too spread out. Oh, no, I can. I think I can go ahead and do this. So I'm just going to go ahead and kind of create a little texture now with this. And this is kind of a, a technique too. I mean, the other one was kind of when you do a wet uh, wet paint or a wet kind of coffee onto the wet surface, it bleeds out. They call that wet on wet. This is kind of more of a wet on dry. And this is if you want to get more of kind of the, the sharper lines and stuff. And it is. I mean, I can see mine starting to bleed out just a little bit more too. So it means I still got a little moisture in my paper. And it's not too bad. But this just allows me to kind of create some of these things in through here. All right, I'm going to keep this a little bit darker underneath here. Very fun. All right. Now, like I said, guys, I got a little kind of intricate with this. I'll carry it away. If you want to do something a little bit more simplex, you could. Um, that's perfectly fine. Well, one thing I forgot to mention, too, is if you get coffee or paint in an area you don't really like, you can always take a little piece of paper towel, dab it up, boom, it's gone. All right, so that's kind of a nice thing, too, to be able to kind of control and be able to take. I'm going to add that one. Now, the other thing, too, is this. I was looking at my, my trunk, and it's awfully white. So I want to go ahead. I'm going to take a little bit of a lighter paint, and I can go over the top of everything, too, but I'm just going to go ahead and add a little bit of a value to this. All right? One thing to keep in mind, too, is this. When you add water to the coffee paint, sometimes what happens is it does it kind of lifts it back out. So you can kind of control it from that standpoint, too. It's, coffee's kind of, a, kind of an interesting medium to work with doesn't stay quite permanent. Actually, if you get water back on it, ooh, you can still kind of do some crazy things with it. Kind of push it around and see what you can do. All right, I'm going to go ahead and add a little bit. Ooh, yeah, see, look at it. It's starting to take off right now. Now I think it might be getting a little too dark, but that's all right. I'm going to go ahead and just leave that for now. All right, so you guys, that is our painting with coffee practice strip. Can't wait to see what you guys create.